Um, our next speakers, Paul and Tan, are developers at um, Monster Lab in Matz's hometown uh, in Japan. They love Ruby because it's fun. And um, like a lot of people who have even spoken at this talk, um, they're just not satisfied with the work they do in their day-to-day, -day, which is just standard Ruby on Rails apps. Um, so they started experimenting with um, MRuby and C for one-chip microcontroller programming. And um, they want to inspire Ruby lovers, who we all are, clearly, um, to have fun and potentially use Ruby for IoT going forward. So let's welcome them. Thank you. Thank you. So, hey, everyone. This is my first time outside Asia. So first of all, a very big thanks to Ruby community for inviting us. So today we'll be talking on how to build a voice-based smart home using Ruby. And we'll talk the product we developed using Ruby to control our home appliances with a very minimum programming, with a very minimum hardware programming skill. Before that, my name is Paul. I'm an Indian, and I'm terrible at dancing. And he's my friend, Tain. He's from Vietnam. And he called himself as a great photographer but I've never seen him taking photos. <laughs> and we both come from Matsue City, and this is one of the recent photographs of Matsue Castle, and it is one of the national treasures of Japan. And I have a question for you guys. How many of you have heard of Matsue City before? One. one guy, two, three, four, okay. Well, awesome. if you check the name of the city again, you will see a match in it. What I was trying to say is, it's a hometown of Matsumoto-san, the founder of Ruby programming language. So we are coming from the Ruby city. So I think we are living in the perfect place to know more about Ruby, because Ruby is not just a programming language for people in Matsue. It's an emotion for them. It's very close to everyone's heart. And we are developers of Monster Lab. It's a Tokyo-based IT company, mainly providing digital product services, co-working space business, mobile game development, and many more. And we have 26 offices around 15 countries. And global sourcing is the foundation for all Monster Lab activities. OK, so let's come to the subject. We'll divide this talk into two parts. In the first half, my friend Tain will explain about MRuby slash C. And in the second half, I'll be talking about the product we developed. And I think you'll you'll be able to make a better product than ours after the talk. OK, so now I'll hand over the mic to my friend, Tain. OK. Thank you, Paul. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I know you own Ghost Tires now, so I just want to say thanks for being stuck here with me. And because uh, my English is not very good, uh, I mean, it sucks. So I try to explain things as simple as possible. Uh, before I start, I have a question. Is anybody here working with MRUBC? Oh, good, nobody. Uh, because if there's somebody, I would sincerely recommend you to take a nap at the post session. Uh, because uh, as you see, I will just talk about some very fundamental stuff. Uh, that's, I'm sure you already know it if you're working with MRUBC. Uh, firstly, let me introduce about myself. My name is Tang, and I'm a Ruby newbie. And some cliche stuff, uh, I know you don't care, so I will skip it. <laughs> so, let's get it started. To understand the concept of MRubyC, I want us to first get familiar with MRuby. You may realize that uh, Yoko, Yoko talked about it yesterday. But unfortunately, the organizer wants us to guarantee the duration of our talk, so I can cut it off. Sorry. Um, so, uh, MRuby is a lightweight implementation of uh, Ruby, along with CRuby, uh, JRuby, GoRuby, and etc. Dedicated to general embedded programming. So let's see what we have here with MRuby. Fuzzy is possible. Thanks to the mechanism of using a virtual machine, uh, we can write once and run it on any system that supports virtual machine. 
So then it's extendable. MDB can call C function and get good from C. Well, I'll, I'll explain how we can do it in detail later. And the last one is lightweight. I try to measure the memory consumption of running, uh, while running Hello World uh, by CRuby, uh, MRuby, and MRubyC. And the result was impressive. CRuby was taking up to 16 megabytes of RAM. And then MRuby came with only 380 kilobytes. Big deal, right? So what about MRubyC? Only 5 kilobytes. Technically, 1 by 80. Did you get the attention now? Uh, so, uh, we got MDUV with portability, extendability, and lightweight. Then we have MDUVC, another implementation of uh, MDUV uh, with uh, almost the same feature, but extremely more lightweight. Uh, in fact, there's another difference in managing multitasking. Uh, with MRuby, you should use, you should use a real-time operating system for it. Uh, meanwhile, MRubyC has its own mechanism called Ruby Runtime Zero. And the, the reason of um, uh, lightweight is they reduce some, uh, some built-in classes from its implementation. As you see, we have just one, two, three, sixteen, but it's just enough. Mm, I'll, uh, you will understand why soon. So let's see how it works first. For example, I have a very simple uh, example here. Uh, um, very simple Ruby code here. Well, we then with uh, MRuby C compiler, we got the bytecode. And the virtual machine will execute the bytecode. That's it, very simple. Uh, but let's dive into a more complicated example. What if I want a function that can control some peripherals? That's where C takes the role. Uh, do you remember when I said that MRuby C comes with very limited functionality? But is that enough? Uh, because C got its back. Uh, after a while digging into uh, MDB C source code, I found that from C, we can manipulate so lots of Ruby stuff, but there's one king method that allows us to define a Ruby method from C. Uh, and because C is so ubiquity, uh, by ubiquity, I mean, for example, uh, for example, when you want a library that does something for you, you may not find a gem for it, but I can guarantee that you, you will find a C library uh, out there doing it for you. Uh, the reason is simply because it's so old, right? Uh, so back to the peripheral problem, uh, peripheral problem. Let's say we want a code that uh, blink the LED uh, every second. Uh, so the Ruby code uh, would look like this, very simple. Firstly, we initialize it, and then in the loop, we turn it on, sleep for one second, and turn it off, and so on. Then apparently, we should define a LED class that has turn on and turn off function. So where does the function MRB turn on come from? Uh, that's where the magic happened. I have a C function to switch the LED on or off. Then by using MRB define method, we have a method called MRB turn on available in Ruby. Awesome. And that's how it works. Okay. Uh, so now you may wonder, it seems that we can do it all by C. Why do we need Ruby here? Well, uh, to be honest, uh, initially I got the same question. But I think it's a mandatory part to necessary simplicity. Uh, let me take an example. Well, we all know that JavaScript is so powerful, right? Um, but you must agree with me that dealing with its syntax is so miserable. That's why we have jQuery. That allows us, that allows us to write less and do more. 
So I think MWC came with the same idea. See, so powerful too, but we need something on the top of the stack uh, to deal with its complexity, right? Uh, then, why MWC over MWB? Well, at the beginning, we chose an Arduino board with MWB for this product. But then, we realized that it was such a waste because we on we only need an I2C protocol to control the simple appliance. Uh, it's like bringing a tank into, into a sword fight. Then we changed to ESP32, the cheapest solution for poor engineers like us. Uh, but the point is, MRUV will not work on, this, on the uh, microcontroller, which have very limited memory. That's why we ended up with MWC. Okay, so let's get to MWC sub and DAOs. Firstly, talking about its DAOs, it's not just official. So there are some difficulties coming along like bugs, obviously. Uh, and just following with being hard to debug, we don't have uh, runtime debug tools yet. But the good news is uh, a senior, senior from our company is working on it, so hopefully it will come out soon. And the last thing, we don't have an official documentation. Uh, I mean, even other documentation. So if MRUBC was a girl and you decide to marry her, I would like to quote a scene from my favorite TV show. When you marry a girl, you should marry her problems too. And the problem, I'm, I'm sure that the problem will, will last forever, right? So after dealing with them, we can look at it bright side. Uh, it's Ruby. And because we are all Ruby, so I mean, just make it very quick. It's strong, dynamic typing, purely object-oriented, uh, readable, writable, and reliable, and it's cheap. Uh, hiring a Ruby developer is much cheaper than C or Python developer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's about development time and so on. Okay, that's, that's it. And now it's the uh, uh, interesting part. I mean, Hannibal, Paul, so you can talk about our product. Thank you for listening. <coughs> okay, so I hope you all got an idea about MRuby slash C. So now we'll see the product we developed. Actually, it's a very small product, so I'm not talking too much about the product. The purpose of this product is to control the lights, TV, and open the door using Alexa. So we'll see a small demo, demo to have an idea more about what it is doing. Alexa, connect to my phone. Sorry. Connecting. Open the door. Opening the door. Let's uh, turn on the lights. Switching light on. Alexa, play I'm not a bad guy. I'm not a bad guy from Hong Kong music. That's what our product is doing. And, and thanks to Tyne for editing. He did all the 2000 years stuff. And okay, so if you're looking from a normal user's perspective, 
Whenever user asks Alexa to switch on the TV, the TV will switch on. That's it. So now let's look from a developer's perspective. Whenever user asks Alexa to switch on the TV, Alexa is actually communicating to the Alexa server. It will try to find the proper request, and it will be mapped to an intent. In this case, it's a TV on intent, and it will be forwarded to the Sinatra web server. This is where our Ruby code is running. And here, from the Ruby code, we will send a response back to the, to the Alexa server. The response is the response which the user is expected to hear from Alexa device, which is switching TV on. And it will be forwarded to the user with the help of Alexa device. And if you don't have a device, you can use the application for free. So that's how the communication in this side works. Now let's look from the other side. To switch on the TV, as we know, we have to transmit some IA signals. For that, we are using a microcontroller. Microcontroller will send the IA signals to the IA transmitter. And this IA transmitter can be used for switching the TV on, similarly for the lights. And to make the communication between microcontroller and Sinatra web server possible, we are using a cloud messaging protocol here, that is Cloud MQTT. And the reason why I choose Cloud MQTT is it's free. I can buy two instances for free. I need things to be cheap. <laughs> yeah. So the purpose is to make the communication between Sinatra web server and microcontroller possible. We'll come to that detail in very soon. And why I decided to create this product. So I'm an Indian. After moving to Japan, I literally had nothing in my apartment. So my senior gifted me his good old TV, but without a remote. So initially, it was OK for me. But eventually, it was getting difficult, because if I need to change the channel or volume level, I always need to get up from my bed or couch. That's really bad. And the second reason is, in Japan, most of the lights are controlled using remote. And I'm, I'm like a normal human being. I find it very hard to keep things in the right place. So it'll be always missing. So these are the reasons why I decided to create a remote, which can be accessed from anywhere. And why Alexa rather than a mobile app or a website? The, the first reason is, these days, everyone has access to internet. And that's the only requirement for Alexa. And it's cheap and portable. It's cheap, because if you think Alexa device is expensive, you can download it from the Play Store or App Store for free. For that reason, it is more portable. And we can get the result in minimum effort. Like, we don't have to do the same tiring procedure every time. You can ask her. She'll definitely do it for you. And it can be accessed from anywhere, anytime. And training smart assistants are really easy. And you'll see that very soon. And why I decided to use a microcontroller than using a Raspberry Pi or, or Arduino board? The first reason, it is very compact. And if you have noticed, my mot the motor which I'm use using to open the door is very small. So I expect the controller should also look small. It should not be bigger than the motor which I'm using. And, and the functionalities are also less. I'm only expecting my computer to, to do less things. So I think a microcontroller is more than enough for that. And it's cheap. I can buy at least five microcontrollers for the price of a Raspberry Pi. So I can easily burn two or three. But still, it will be a profit for me. And the choices of power supply, we have different choices of power supply. And it starts immediately. If you're using a Raspberry Pi, we have to wait for the operating system to start. It may roughly take four to five seconds. In this case, it starts immediately. And it has inbuilt Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Now we'll see how each part of the part of a product is working one by one. So first we'll see how Alexa is communicating to the Sinatra web server. So as I've said previously, whenever user asks Alexa to switch on the TV, Alexa is actually communicating to the Alexa server. Alexa server will try to find the proper request, and it will be mapped to the intent. Intent is just a container which is saving the sample utterances. And once the intent is identified, it will be forwarded to the Sinatra web server. And it will send a response back to the Alexa server. And the response will be switching TV on. And the Alexa server will then convey this message to the user with the help of an Alexa device. So now we'll see how to create a custom Alexa skill. I said it's very simple. 
just go to the sign into the Alexa developer console. You will see an option to create a new skill. Just click on that. And you can enter the skill name, choose a default language. So you have created a skill. And here, we would like to add an invocation name. Invocation name is a name which will help the Alexa server to uniquely identify your customly created skill. I'm making it Ruby conference here. So whenever user asks Alexa the Ruby conference, Alexa server will map the request to a newly created custom Alexa skill. And then, OK, we have to add the indents. Indent is like a container which will save the sample utterances inside. So here I am creating an indent called brief indent. And I will add the sample utterances, which will be to tell about Ruby Conference Australia, or brief me about Ruby Conference Australia. And then we will have to build the model. Building model is actually training Alexa server to adapt to new changes. And then we will have to add the endpoint. Endpoint is actually the endpoint of our uh, Sinatra web server. It can be either HTTPS or Lambda IRN. So I think now you got an idea on how the Alexa is communicating to the Alexa server and how it is mapping the request to a particular intent. Now we'll see how it is working in the Sinatra web server side. And what we are expecting is Sinatra will receive the request and it will send an appropriate response back to the Alexa server. For that, we'll mainly have three files. There'll be a gem file, there'll be a file for indents, and there'll be server.rb. We are, we are using two gems here. The first gem is Sinatra, and the other gem is Ralitsa. And the server.rb will have a single post method because all the requests from Sin Alexa web server will be a post method. So whenever a new request from the Alexa server received, it will be handled by Ralitsa. So in the Alexa developer console, we have created an intent, which is brief intent. So whenever user asks Alexa to brief about Ruby Conference Australia, Alexa server will identify the proper request, and it will be mapped to the intent called brief intent. And it will be forwarded to the, uh, our Sinatra web server. And here, Ralitsa will check for an intent named brief intent. And if it sees that, it will send, it will send this response back to the Alexa server. So that's how the Alexa is communicating to the uh, Sinatra web server and how it is getting the response back. Now we'll, okay, now we'll see how it is working in our project. I'm just showing how we are switching the TV on. So whenever user asks Alexa to switch on the TV, Alexa will be communicating to the Alexa server. Alexa server will forward the intent, which is TV on intent, to the Sinatra web server. And the web server, will, the Alexa will check for an intent called TV on intent. And if it is defined, it will check whether the TV is, has already switched on. If the TV is already on, it will send a response back saying the TV has already switched on. Otherwise, it will call the method tv.on. Here, what it is doing is uh, it will send a message uh, to the ESP32, the microcontroller, using Cloud MQTT. And it will wait for the message or the response from the microcontroller. And if it is received, it will come back to the intent and it will send a response back to the Alexa web server saying the TV, has, the TV will be switching on. That's how it is working in our product. And as I've said, we are using a Cloud MQTT here. Well, Cloud MQTT is a messaging protocol which uses publish, subscribe, message queuing model. So here, the ESP32 and the Sinatra web server will be uh, what? Uh, subscribing to a common topic. So whenever one device uh, send a message, Cloud MQTT will forward the message to the other connected devices. So when Sinatra web server posts a message, Cloud MQTT will forward to ESP32, and ESP32 will take the necessary action, which will be either switching on, switching off, or opening the door. Now we'll see how the microcontroller is communicating to home appliances. So as I have shown, uh, OK, so to control the TV or to control the lights, 
we need to transmit the IR signals. So I have created an IR transmitter here, and my microcontroller is connected to the IR transmitter. So the duty of this microcontroller is to send the IR signals to the IR transmitter. And similarly for the door, I'm using a servo motor. It's a, it's a very small motor. We are not happy with this design. It's here, physics is playing too much role than engineering. So we'll definitely improve it next time. And yeah, this microcontroller will send signal to the motor and the motor will start rotating and somehow the door will open. Okay, so now we'll see the code of mruby slash c because the uh, microcontroller is programmed using mruby slash c. As Stein has already explained, I hope he has already explained this. So everything starts from main.c. So if you check the header section, you will see mrubyc library is added to the header section. And here we'll be talking mainly about the task master. So that is also added to the header section. And then if you check the main function, the mrbc is initialized with a memory size of 40 KB. And uh, MRBC defined method is also called. I'll talk about that later. And then we are creating an MRBC task. MRBC task, because today we'll be mainly talking about master.rb. So we are creating an MRBC task, which is master. And MRBC run will run all the tasks concurrently. So now we'll see what is happening in master, the main task. So in master, in an infinite loop, it will check for the connectivity to the network and cloud MQTT. If the connection is a success, it will wait for a new message to arrive. And if the message, message is actually the request from the user. If the request is to open the door, it will rotate the motor. And if the request is to switch on the TV, yes, it will switch on the TV. So we'll see what, how it is switching on the TV. It will update the state first, and then it will try to send a signal. But as Stein has already said, all the peripheral communications are done using C programming because we can do, we can use, C, C can do it with minimum program, minimum memory. So, this, so if you check the main function, uh, you will see an MRBC method is defined, which is send signal. So whenever send signal method is called from the Ruby side, C send signal function written in C uh, will be called. So send signal is actually sending the value and it will be received uh, in the C side and then it will transmit the signal to the IR transmitter. That's how it is working. Okay, it was very fast. So in conclusion, we switch the light on, and after 2,000 years, we switch the TV on. <laughs> yeah, so if you'd like to see our work, uh, please go and check here. And uh, if you have any suggestions or improvements, we'll, please come to us. We'll definitely do it for the next time. And you can find us here. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thanks, Olive.